prayer in which I will administer that prayer. And then we have the Old Testament reading by Dr. Denise Logan. And then we have the New Testament reading by Dr. Leah Killings, followed by the invocation by Reverend William Major. So again, I will come with the prayer. We will have the Old Testament future by Dr. Denise Logan and the New Testament by Dr. Leah Killings and then the invocation by Reverend William Major. Let us pray. God, we thank you on today. We acknowledge and we honor you for who you are. While the reality is we do not like the moment we're in, we still find security in your name and stability in your promises that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever ask or even think. So God, we ask in this moment, in this minutes that we spend together, that you make this family's healing your priority. You make their strength mandatory. But most of all, God, you remind them that you are a God that sits high, but most of all, you specialize in any and everything that they may deal with or experience. So God, we thank you. God, we thank you for the life in which has brought us all together on today to celebrate. And God, we thank you for his family that reared him, that raised him, and that showed him the right way. God, we thank you for his successes. But most of all, God, we thank you for his victory, uh, that his bottle has been fought, and now his victory is won. And so, God, after today, God, give this family strength, give them power, but most of all, God, give them your presence. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. 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 At this time, Dr. Denise Logan will come. together giving thanks for the allness and the oneness of eternal spirit that connects each one of us. We give thanks for the life of Dr. Jason Smith 
as we come together to celebrate this life. The joy, the laughter, and the love that he showed to each one of us as we pray for his mother, that God may comfort her in her time of grief and bereavement. And we give thanks that the Lord is our shepherd, yes. and we shall not want as he lays us beside still waters in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we yes. will fear no evil. Yes. For God is within each one of yes. us. Yes. The rod of righteousness and the staff of truth, they comfort us. Even as a table is prepared before in the presence of our enemies. Mm -hmm. yes. But thanks, oh thanks be to yes. God yes. who anoints our heads yes. and our cup runs over and over and over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy will follow us. For we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that house is our body temples where the living spirit of God dwells within. Thank you, God, for this precious moment in time, unlike any other. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will be glad and we will celebrate and thank God for this life that has yeah. gone yeah. for us. Thanking and praising God. Yes. yes, oh death, where is thy sting? Yeah. Oh grave, where is thy victory? Uh -huh. The sting of death is like sin. Mm. Yes, and the strength of sin is the Lord. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Jesus to Christ. Let us pray for each and every one of you who have taken time out of your busy schedule. Because you could have been anywhere else, but you so sore fit to be here that we may celebrate this life who has passed us. And that we may pray for his dear mother. That God may make a new spirit of truth in your heart and in your mind. That you may know this truth concerning life. That life is real. That life is true, but most of all, that life is eternal, living on in our hearts and in our minds. Thank you, God, for this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad in it. Thanking and praising God for God's mercy, which endures us to the end. For God's unconditional love that runs like a river from the crowns of our heads to the very soles of our feet. But most of all, for God's grace which is sufficient to supply every need, even in a time like this. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ through the light and the word, let them say amen. 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 Thank you, God. Come on, can we give God praise for Reverend William Major. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Hey, at this time, we're going to have um, a musical selection, uh, Don't Cry For Me, by Sister Susan Gibson. Hey, Amen.
Praise God again for the opportunity to come and speak on Dr. Isom's behalf. Dr. Isom is the um, owner and the president and dean of um, Aaron's Beard International School of Ministry. She has had this school for many years. And she has many um, programs to be ordained as well as receive associate bachelor's master's and doctorate degrees. And so I was privileged to be Jason's facilitator. And so if I could just share a few words um, on that behalf, he was a very diligent student. Even in the midst of his challenges, he still turned his work in. And I gave him every opportunity to take a pass, but he still submitted his work all the way up until the end. And that's just how dedicated he was. Needless to say, his mom is a little bit more dedicated. But praise God. <laughs> Nevertheless, they both were very excellent students and very concerned about their knowledge and understanding of not just understanding the word, but being able to use it for their benefit to reach others. And so if I could just take this time on the behalf of Dr. Isom to go ahead and present him with his doctorate, honorary degree, 
for the time spent, and it was well earned and well received. Well, well um, may he continue to share his, 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 his kind words, his loving words, to those that are in heaven that are listening and will give us the inspiration to not let anything challenge us or prevent us from moving forward in the things of God. We have an opportunity. We need to take advantage of it in every way, even through challenges. Make sure that you seek God and he will give you the strength you need to move forward. God bless you and have a wonderful evening or afternoon. Come on, let's give God praise for that awesome presentation. Come on. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to ask Miss Doris Smith. Hey, man, this mic right here, ma'am, so you don't have to go to come steps with this long for you.
we shall bring the bitter grief that comes and try to find our strength. May God continue to bless all of us. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. At this time, the family has uh, reserved a few minutes for uh, tribute. And I'd like to add, while I believe we all have some awesome sentiments we can show and express today about our moment in time with doctor, right? Um, the truth of the matter is, we don't have all day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so I would like to invite those of you who would like to speak Please come in your own way and speak. Uh, we're giving you two minutes. And in the event you go over two minutes, I'm a real nice guy. I'll say amen. <laughs> if you go past two and a half minutes, the hood gonna show up. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, now sit on down. <laughs> but we wanna give you this opportunity to come up. And here's the thing about it. While you don't have all day to talk and share your sentiments, that gives you a reason to call his mother and keep a smile on her face. My grandmothers used to sing us some precious memories. Yeah. How they linger. And so it's the memories of yesterday that we build upon for today that prepares us for tomorrow. Somebody say amen. amen. And so at this time, if you would like to come and speak, share some submit, so give expressions of love. The mic to my left, your right, is now open and we invite you up at this time. He was always there whenever I needed to call him. He was the main person who spoke with me whenever I needed help with uh, moral advice. Um, we spoke, we spent a lot of time with each other and his, and his family as well. Um, it, uh, it's a privilege for me to have got to know him and continue to remember him and be a part of, or, um, be a part of uh, the family as well. And we're gonna always stay close. Yeah. I don't want to take today as a period where we mourn his death, but I would rather celebrate his life. And that he accomplished a lot in the years that he was on this earth, more than uh, some, other, some other folks can say for their entire life. And although he may not be present in the physical realm here, he'll always be present in our hearts. And I want us to always remember that He's always here with us, no matter what we what we see, because it's not all about what a human can see. And we should continue on to support one another, to re to remember the life that he had and the life that he shared with us, because we will never forget him. And I know that he's in um, in a better place now, and it's now that he's no longer suffering the human sufferings that he went through. Um, and I want us to just just to you know just sit on that thought. And be there for his family as well. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. The Bible says a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. And I believe he was a true friend and brother. Amen. My name is Junior uh, Francois. Uh, we went to school at Full Sail University of um, Honestly, I was going to come up here and say everything that I've to say. You know, he was a great man. He was dedicated. He was smart. He was a great friend. I, I could call him at any point, any time of the day, um, and he'll be there. Um, and he'll also, yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Give an honor. 
honor to God who's here in my life, pulpit staff and staff, our precious friend and beloved Dr. Janice Logan and your family who love me very much. I'm here representing as a friend and association fellow co-worker with Denise and fellow Toastmaster from Toastmaster International. Some of our members are here. Wave your hand, please. They're back there. We're here just in solidarity to say how much we love you, Denise, how much we love Jason. We had many a time, many a meetings and fellowship together. And Jason would come and he's just one of us. The one thing I remember about him the most is his kindness and his uh, pleasant demeanor. Always had a pleasant word to say. I don't hate to see Jason mad. Let me tell you that right now. But he was always wonderful. And I was sharing with my family earlier today how he represented his age group well. You're talking about a wonderfully well-mannered young man. That was Jason. And he respected and loved everyone. So on behalf of my family and Toastmaster International, we just say love, we love you. We love Jason and we know that he's with God. Thank you. Greetings everybody. My name is Mercedes and I met Denise at work. She was the project manager of the women and I was over dispatch program. Denise invited me to her house and I found out that my daughter knew Jason. My daughter's name is Rahanna. I have another daughter named Lubina. And Lubina became the girlfriend of Jason. Um, he was very kind, you know, he took her to very special places. And he was very studious, very smart. And um, he would come to the Toastmaster meetings. I don't know if any of my children ever came to the Toastmaster meetings. So Denise was really very instrumental you know, guiding him. Denise also guided him to, I guess, Florida University, um, where he got his degree in film. So, you know, Jason has done a lot. You know, he admired my poetry. Um, we talked a lot. And he told me some things that Denise didn't even tell me. But um, very kind person, a very pleasant smile, always smiling. And so, of course, I'll miss him. Um, Jason, I just want to say to you, while you're in heaven, say hi to Mabina, my daughter. And while you're at it, say hi to my son, Ismail, who also passed recently. It just seems like everybody is going to heaven. Maybe I need to join the party. That's all I can think. Maybe I need to join the party. You know, and they died on our birthday, so I'm sure we'll never forget that.
Um, you would be hard pressed to catch him angry. You would be hard pressed to catch him sad. Even the day that he left, he 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 he, he was still turning around. The day the day that he knew he made a transition, he went from this side to the other side. He wasn't sad. He was not sad. He was happy. He was in a good in a good place. Wishing mom a happy birthday. So today, oh my God, let's be joyous. Because look, he's not sick. He's not hurting. Man, he's up there. I'm like, what's, what's happening, y'all? What's, what's going on? Right? I'm sure he's probably. Those of you that are close friends of his, y'all know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know I'm telling the truth, right? Yeah, yeah. You know I'm telling the truth. So y'all, let's 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 lighten up and let's be proud that he was a part of our lives, and let's remember all the positive, all the good things about Jason because there's so much. There's so much good. There's so much positive. He was a young, bright light on this earth. And we can remember. And we can be happy. Let's be happy. This is a celebration of life. Celebrate. Can we just do something? Can we give God praise right now? Come on, give God praise. Come on, come on. If you love the Lord, I want to see you stand on your feet and just give God praise. Come on, he woke you up this morning. Come on. Come on, put your say something to him. Say, God, we love you. God, thank you for doing it just for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Go ahead, you can listen.
If you don't mind turning to the person beside you and say that's these few little words to them, I ask that you when you share, you share with conviction and confidence that the word is going to be shared. You have to be confident knowing that that's the word which you mean. Turn to the person and say, I am, I am the light of the world. I am, I am the light of the world. The that will form the basis of the message just shortly within this um, content. Here we find in the book of Matthews where Jesus was preparing the disciples and getting them really ready and where he was sharing with them about certain things that they need to be prepared and ready for. If you look at verse in the, in the chapter 14, I mean the chapter, fourth chapter, you'll find Jesus has selectively and strategically ran to leaders to fulfill and continue to work on the things he needed to do. He ran into the disciples, he went to the um, John and Peter and who were fishermen, and then he prepared them and shared with them, build the cross and follow me. Here we find as Jesus was going, crossing over doing the Mount of Beatitudes, and here we were sharing some things and sharing and highlighting some things relating to saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. And he highlighted again and said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst at the righteousness sake, for they shall see God. When he rolls down again, continue to share in the Bible with this content of this these verses, you find that he also reminds us that that we have to let your light shine before man such a way that you may see God for they may see God's good good work and glorify him. Here we find that Jason, your friend, our nephew, this young man loved God so much that he let all his light shine before all of us. That his heavenly father would get the glory. He has gone through many preparation. And if you don't mind, I just wanted just to highlight and just use how God just strategically used his mother to bring him here. She equipped him. She empowered him before he realized to know his purpose of life. Then he realized his purpose of life and grabbed on salvation and was very passionate about it. Jason was to a point that he realized that he exceeded through school and had been exposed to great things. And yet, he loved God. And even during his ups and his downs, God still was with him. Even then, when it seemed like that he wanted to storm the towel, he was smiling, as the sister said. All the time, no matter what the circumstances is, he always was smiling and came a spirit of hope, a spirit of confidence, and a spirit of knowing that no matter what, God is still with me. And I'm here to share with you today and encourage you today that as our brother and our loved one has transitioned. Now he's with the Heavenly Father. I want to ask you a question as you have cited over just a few minutes ago. Is you really the light of the world? What are you doing? Jason shared the gospel. It's very interesting in knowing that I was just looking at some things and noticed why he was in a hospital. He was sharing with a nurse about five-fold ministry. You in the hospital. And you talking and trying to give 
someone else an understanding about fivefold ministries. When was the last time that you shared about Christ to someone else? When you knew that that only salvation is going to save them. You don't realize that you're the hook that's on that fishing rod can pull someone out of that captivity. Can pull someone out of that bondage. You said you are the light of the world. Yes. Now, there are various different types of lights. Well, may, I'm not sure if you're the neon light mm -hmm. or you that flashlight. But the light I'm talking about, that light that Christ given within us, has to stay on 24-7. Mm -hmm. That light never is dimmed. That light is never to a point that you cannot recognize it. You allow your light shine without broadcasting it. Without allowing you having a name on you. But living the life that you will walk to in the shopping mall. And something about how you live your life, people don't even know you. Say something about that person. I don't know what it is, but the God is in them. They, I want to know a little bit more about them. You never know. A Nicodemus may come to you and ask you, "What do I need to do to be saved?" Are you willing to do that? Are you have the capabilities of the sharing salvation to someone else in their life? Something about Jason, I love that. I was re reading some things. He loves sports. He likes football. He likes, bass. he likes baseball. And he participated in a baseball event in which his team was ahead. His team was ahead, five to four. But there was in the situation that it was the bottom of the knife, three people on base, it was two strikes, and if they get the final out, they were willing to gain. I can imagine the intensity as well as the anxiety and the, and the anxiousness that the knowing that what if the pitcher throw the wrong pitch? He may hit on run. What if the pitcher will throw the ball away? Then a runner will come in and they will lose. But when he had confidence in his teammate, who was a pitcher who threw the ball, the batter hit the ball. The ball was in the air. And strategically, not knowing, Jason was on first base. Not knowing that the ball was going to come his direction. It depended on him to catch the ball so that they would win. He positioned himself as the ball was coming quickly towards his glove. And he realized, if I don't catch this ball, we will lose. And I'm here to let you know, sometime God will give you a responsibility that way you can position yourself to catch that ball. Because at the end, if you catch the ball of salvation, you will win at the end. And I'm so glad that that true story, Jason did catch the ball, right. and he tagged the person out, and they ran out there and won the game. Right. And I'm here to tell you this morning, this afternoon, if you just position yourself and stand on God's word and believe in your heart that you are the light of this world, you'll find out that opportunity will come your way. And you may have to save somebody by catching our ball. You may have to save someone by delivering our ball. But wherever it takes, if you keep Jesus in your heart, wherever it takes, you keep Jesus on your mind, wherever it takes, allow Jesus be the navigator of your life.
And then someone want to ask you, who is your daddy? If someone asks you, who's your heavenly father? You will say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. And because he's the Lord of my life, and I can say, I am the light of this world. That light becomes with a cause. That light comes with a responsibility. You ain't just saying it because you want to be part of the team. But if you want to be on the team called Jesus Christ, it comes with a cause. How do I know it comes with a cause? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he said, who should ever believe in me shall have life and have more abundantly. God gave his life. His only son, he threw the ball. yourself together if you want to rededicate your life you can do that you can do that if you want to say you know what I want to give my life over to Christ you can do that you can do that if you just say you know what I, I have, have, have this gone down the wrong road but I'm here to let you know God has prepared a place for you that you can do a U-turn and return back to him. As we just bow our heads and close our eyes and maybe there's someone here who really just doing some serious self-examination of themselves. And you realize that I need to have a closer relationship, a closer walk with Christ. While I, everyone's eyes, head bowed, and every eye was shut. And you just want to slide your hand up and say, I need to have a relationship, a closer relationship with God. Maybe there's someone who decided just to say, you know what? I need to just, just, just go all in. Go all in and just be totally sold out. If there's anyone here who wants Jesus, their choice. Slide your hand up. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word of God. We thank God for you, Denise. You have done what the word of God has said. Train up a child the way they should go. 
And when they have to part, will never depart from it. You have equipped him. No, we love him, we're gonna miss him. But it's a win-win. Because Lord, we live on this earth and do what he did. And Lord, the light that he shine through his films to all those different things that he encountered. You be the light of the world in your community, at your home, on your job, wherever it is. Lord Jesus lead you, lead you. And when you do that, you will never lose. But you always go in. May the Lord bless you. Real quickly, as our awesome staff come, the program does call for a resolution um, from Sparkle Adams, the president of the National Association of Black Military Women. So we're going to receive her at this time. This mic to my left, you're right. Come on, give God praise as she comes, will you? Amen. Association of Black Military Women, I, Sparkle K. Adams, President, present to the family of Dr. Jason Vaughn Smith, any BMW resolution. On this 22nd day of May 2021, the National Association of Black Military Women wishes to express our deepest sympathy to our sister service woman, Denise Logan, U.S. Army, America. <laughs> yeah. a, traveler, a, a, a traveler ventured forth one day upon a long and winding road with faith and trust to lead the way with strength that will and that will to bear the heavy load. And at a slow but steady pace in the cold of storm and the warmth of sun, Jason journeyed from place to place and gain some value from each one. Until at last, a quiet night, Jason climbed the hill's soft, rounding crest. A soft, a far, a sea, and saw far a single light that seemed to promise peace and rest. And following its glow, he came upon a house in which it shone. A voice inside called out his name and told him, Jason, you're truly home. Now all of us must travel too. Like Jason, our paths wind slowly on. And surely when the course is through, a welcome comfort waits beyond. May we believe that sweet content is earned by all those miles that pass. And never doubt each traveler's meant to reach a loving home at last. So with all God's blessing, may you find comfort in knowing that Jason is home at last and that one day you'll meet again. Yeah. The National Association of Black Military Women extend our love as a symbol of our unity and our sister service woman and our sister we love you. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. She bragged about the Air Force, but in Sunday school, he called us, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. 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 At this time, our funeral staff will now come. Amen. Well, can we just give God one more hand clap of praise? Well, first, give an honor to God, who is most certainly the head of my life, to our wonderful, wonderful eulogies and our officiant. Thank you so much. Ministerial staff, thank you so much for your words of encouragement that you all have rendered to this family during that time of bereavement. They certainly say thank you. 
And to the family and friends who have gathered here today, on behalf of this immediate family seat, seated on this first row, they would like to say thank you as well. Thank you for your cards, your calls, your prayers, your beautiful floral tributes, and simply just being here today. And this outpouring of love that you have overwhelmed this family with means so, so much to them. And I pray that you continue that. Continue your calls, continue your texts, just to let them know that you are still there for them. Amen? Amen. Well, on behalf of myself, my father, Mr. Willie Watkins, and the entire Willie Watkins funeral home family, we will personally like to thank this family for entrusting us with your dear, dear loved one. And in doing so, we've prepared this memorial plaque to keep and cherish his beautiful and loving memory until you meet him again. Thank you, and may God continue to bless each and every one of you all.